friendly people. How are you doing today? I am Grace. You might know me and you may not know me. This may be your first time to my little podcast called Babbles Travelling Yarns and this is episode 32. 32 languages. And I hope I did that well. Yeah, it's okay. So, I can't believe I'm on 32, actually. It's kind of cray-cray. I've got a few things to show you this week. It's going to be maybe a little bit shorter. Who knows? Who knows? I could talk forever. Um, but my name is Grace, and you can find me as Vanna Willemiel on Instagram, Ravelry, Periscope, and now Runkeeper, except it's kind of tricky to find anyone on Runkeeper, so I don't know. Um, so... Yeah, you can find me on any of the social medias there and also my YouTube channel, which is where you've probably found me. Um, if you want to be updated every time I upload, I'm going to try and do it weekly. I'm going to try and record on Saturdays and during the week then it uploads randomly at whatever time. So it's not very reliable. So if you do want to make sure that you don't miss out, um, subscribe if you like. And uh, give me a little thumbs up if you want because it... Um, it helps other people find my podcast. So other people have said, I don't know how the YouTubes works, but it's, oh, it's so handy for me. So what I will do now is talk about what I am wearing at the moment. And I literally just pulled this out because I actually came back from a run. And I think this pink is very like pink, pink. So I just kind of covered it up. And also it's a little cold because it's been raining on and off. But this is actually um, Mina Phillips uh, Bluebells, Budding Bluebells shawl. And this is done in an acrylic and cotton blend of yarn from, excuse me, from a shop. Uh, it's kind of like a, a Michaels or a Hobbycraft or whatever shop in Australia called Lincraft. And... It's fine. <laughs> I, I'm disappointed that the bottom doesn't stay down. I probably, I don't think I had enough of this green to make a larger garter tab at the bottom and that might have held it down. But I do love this lace. Lacy, lace, lace, lace. So this is just their um, cotton and acrylic blend. I think it was 30%, 30% or something like that. Anyway, it was cheapy, cheap, cheapy, cheap, cheap, cheap. And I wanted to knit it. And I tuck it up like that. And then it keeps me cozy. And then I'll just do that. I don't know. I kind of just want to hide the pink. So I might just do this. Ah, that's grand. I mean, pink is fine, but I think it's just very distracting sometimes. Oh, it's so cozy. Um, I have no finished objects this week, but I have a from the archives. You are going to literally split your sides when you see this. It's ridiculous. It's my first ever finished garment and I finished it before I left Ireland about a year and a half ago. And, um, oh gosh. I was, I was crocheting at the time, so I decided to crochet. And it's patterns, classic yarn, but anyway, it's this thing this thing here and I'll show you. James tried it on and he just fell about laughing. He's so judgy. Very judgy, that boy. Now, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> it's got a hood and everything, lads. Look, look at this. <laughs> buttons for this and I never put them on shocked shocked and appalled but look a hood and everything I'm so cool right now it's crocheted now the length is totally fine the length stops about there but look at this but it's really warm so I think I'm gonna keep it on <laughs> it's so warm I think there's like a there's a bit of a fade coming in from up there, so I think I might try and turn that down there like this. It's a bit of shininess going on, sorry about that. But yeah, this is, I don't even know what this is. I think I got it from the, the pattern from Pinterest. And I did however many repeats. 
but there was just too many. I did it in pieces and uh, put it together and I'd completely forgotten about this until James pulled it out and tried it on and he was like, did you make this for the Slender Man or something? <laughs> I was like, I don't know what that reference is, but no, don't be so mean. <laughs> So that's my from the archives and I'm just gonna, just gonna roll it up I don't even know if I can do this I think what I'll do actually is cut I'll just cut it and uh, yeah I don't even know how you can cut crochet I know how to cut knitting but I don't know how to cut crochet does anyone have a clue because you know it's grand for laying about the house and my hood my hood is so cool. But yeah, the pattern on it is, it was all like knit into the front loop or crochet into the front, you know, down and grab it. It was really quite advanced crocheting, you know? I don't know what the pattern is. If I can find it somewhere on my old phone, I'll, I'll try my best. So, right, from the archives. So bad. So bad. <laughs> So I had a ton of comments in my last um, on my last video feed and it was absolutely lovely to see them coming in this week. Um, and so many people had really, really good ideas. And thank you so much to everybody for the brilliant priceless feedback I got from that um, little giveaway thread. Um, and I've got a winner. Um, if you commented the last time, keep your ears peeled because I have no other information on you apart from this. But um, the winner of the 1,000 subscriber giveaway for this bag from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, the one where you can embroider your own thing. I will make it pretty. I, I It was in a bit of a bundle. Um, the pattern for the Selba Mittens by um, Ellie from Skein Deer and two balls of beautiful New Zealand Merino silver linings. Is that upside down? Are they upside down? Are they both upside down? Silver linings, 100% uh, New Zealand Merino. Oh, those colors are so pretty. And some adorable Edinburgh tartan sheep magnets. so cute. <laughs> so the winner is Vicky Shaw. Vicky. Thank you so much for commenting. It was lovely to hear that you came over from Shannon and uh, Marsha's videos, I think, because I was all over them like a rash. So thank you so much for following along and uh, welcome. <laughs> what a nice little welcome surprise. So I want you to send me a private message either on Instagram or Ravelry um, and give me your email, uh, your, your postal address so I can post that out to you this week. Awesome. All righty. So... One more thing about cals and knit alongs and giveaways and everything. So the April Wow Cal is here. Today is the 1st of April and I don't have any April Fool's jokes. Dang, I should have thought about that. But I didn't, my entire life is a joke, so it's fine. Now, so we are moving on from Asia, even though you can still, you still have the whole four months to actually knit something from Asia. So don't panic about that. Um, so we're moving on from Asia to Europe. And we're, that's being hosted by Dan and Kay of the Bakery Bears, our favourite. My favourite. Oh my god, I love them so much. But they have a special theme for their month, which is super, super cute. And it's, I think it's, it's afternoon tea. And I've got to do some serious looking around for some afternoon tea idea yarns. I'm not sure. I'll have to have a look. Or patterns. I was thinking maybe one of the patterns. There's, oh, there's so many out there. But anyway, I'm sure they will have a massive list on their Ravelry page. Um, so you should pop over to episode 71 of the Bakery Bears for their month of the Wow Cow. Hooray! Now, right, shall we move on to what I've been doing for the past week? I'm going to put this on as well because it's got cold here. It's been a bit miserable and a bit rainy, but tomorrow should be lovely. And we're doing a big walk from Rathkeel to somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where. But they've opened up a big, um, an old railway line. So I'll be doing some video logging of that. So it should be a beautiful day. So I have been knitting. Ah, oh, yes. So in my wonderful bag by Carmen, who I saw last night at a VK. And hi, Carmen. Um, this beautiful bag by Zunko. Actually, I think it's Shunko. Oh well. Xylophone. Z Zunko. Zunko. 
Um, this is The Stargazer Shawl by Marsha Ibuki, and I've got quite far. Now, I don't know where the pattern is, and I don't have a wing scales that is accurate enough. So actually, I've stopped on this because you're supposed to knit until you get to a certain stage in the weight of your yarn, the weight you've left and the weight you have. And I don't have, I don't have a thingy. <laughs> But I'm going to be needing a new house soon, so I have lots of things to get and things to buy, so that will be no problem. But this is the amazing Stargazer shawl, and you can see the pattern really nicely there. I have loosened up. Look how much I've loosened up deliberately. It's quite hard for me to loosen up. I'm obviously very tightly wound in person. <laughs> but this yarn is by um, Michelle, Isis Fibre Arts, Michelle. And... I miss knitting on it really. I should really organize myself and get an L wing scales just to measure because I don't want to waste any single gram of this beautiful skein of yarn. Oh my god, if you want to see more of her yarn, go over to Shamika of the um, Knit Night with Mikamika uh, podcast and you should see the pink yarn, pink sparkly yarn that she got. Oh my gosh, it just looks incredible so so good but just oh yeah baby yeah that's the good stuff that's the good stuff right there oh. so yeah I'm in oh. I'm still absolutely loving so I think I've got to the section where I need to go straight now you know I feel like it's quite long Ah, oh, I need to find the pattern and, and look at it properly but I thought I was kind of overshooting what the pattern said so I was like oh this is too potato chippy. It's too easy to keep going. So I had to stop. So that's fun. Oh, I just love the way this fabric is. You can like pull it any which way. And it has like a really nice like. Mm. Yes, I need to get back to that. And I'm knitting them on 2.75 interchangeable chowkoos. And I kind of wish I'd gone up a needle size because Marcia has a very loose gauge to me. I have a very tight gauge. So if you have a tight gauge, go up a needle size on this. And I think, or swatch, you need to swatch to make sure that you're getting the fabric that you want. I swatched by starting the garment and then I got too far and I was like, I'm not going back. <laughs> Bad swatcher, gauge, smage. So, <laughs> okay. So the next one I've done, I had another problem with tight gauge. Oh well. So I have a wonderful friend at Rich who's doing a series of knit related prints. He's a he's a lino cutter, lino printer. And you can find him on Instagram as at things rich shoots. Um, which is so funny, play on words is so funny. But he um I was over I went over to his house and um, I was saying, oh, I really need, I'm thinking about trying to get a logo, you know, and he whipped one up in like seconds. So, you know, he's working on that at the moment. I said, oh my God, like, what, what will I get you? What do you want? He's like, oh, I just want a beanie. And I was like, um, I think I should do more for him, but beanie it is. So when I was in, um, Canada, in Kelowna, on the way to the airport, away from Marsha, Marsha stopped off at a shop called The Art of Yarn, I think it is called, yes. The Art of Yarn Shop in Kelowna, in British Columbia, in Canada. And they had their, I think this is their own yarn line that they dye. It's called Mulberry Yarns, and this is the super fine fingering weight. And it's the Sylvian colorway. And it is beautiful. I got it because it was coming up to St. Patrick's Day at the time. And I was like, I'm going to cast something out for St. Patrick's Day because it's green. And I never did. But instead, I cast it on a couple of days later. So that's okay, too. Oh, I just love it. So I started off this hat going, oh, yeah, you know, on this, I started it off as a single, you know, just... 180, 180 stitches around for the sock head hat or something. I can't remember. I went through a lot of different patterns. And then I didn't like the way that it was coming out. It wasn't like, it wasn't warm enough, I thought. So I decided to pull from the inside and the outside of the ball. So I'm actually knitting two strands at a time. And I kind of just randomly cast on 100, 
100 stitches and did a two by two ribbing. And then I decided when I went to watch Beauty and the Beast, I was gonna be like, yeah, I can watch it. I can just knit, 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 and I knit, 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 knit. And then I realized I didn't change needle size. I should have gone up a needle size. Cause when I got out and I tried it on, it was like squeezing my brain. And Rich has a bigger head than I do. So I was like, fudge sickles. So I had about two, three inches knit, so I ripped it all back and I changed knit. I, I went up three needle sizes. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, I can't remember what size it was, but anyway, because I still want it to be quite tight, you know, I still, I don't want it to be too loose, but this is a 3.25 needle thingy. Yeah, 3.25. I think I went up two needle sizes then. Because I think it was a 2.75 that I started on. I don't know why it was so small. Anyway. So yeah, I think it's turning out okay now. I think. I'll put it on the... Yeah, so there's still some space in there. Look, I've got a little peek. Peek hat. Yay! So I've been knitting this in work, actually. Um, I started at my new job. Uh, as a, a locum and um, I had an interview on the Friday and I should be hearing about it well I should really we all should have heard about it actually on Friday but none of us did and I think I don't know what the story is anyway here's hoping it's all gonna go okay fingers crossed everybody basically they've told me I have the job but I just I don't know until I said contract you know I just you just don't know these things Anyway, so I have been working and I have been bringing this in and just working on it at lunch, which has been nice and they've got to know that I'm the knitter and that's it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Now, I, now I've started on this now and I can't stop. Oh no, what's going to happen? It's just a very simple hat. I'm not even going to do anything else. I, I'm just kind of testing out hat sizes, I suppose. And I'll find, I did start on a pattern. I think it was called... <laughs> really funny name uh, ribbed for his pleasure <laughs> they're so cheeky <laughs> um but i didn't really want to do because i went to the cinema i didn't really want to do ribbing all the way up because you know ribbing is like you have to watch what you're doing uh so i didn't uh so i don't know what i'm gonna do really i'm probably still gonna use her decreases though but just without the ribbing because i quite liked the way they decreased i don't know i'll see i'll have a look Anyway, you should have a look at our pattern. It's really, it's a really nice pattern. Really nice, simple man hat pattern. You know, nothing fancy. Why do men not want fancy things? Honestly. Anyway, Rich, this is yours. If you watch this far into the video, 19 minutes. Ooh, probably a little bit too far in, I'd say. Yeah, I think I'm safe. Anyway, um, I'll just finish this row now and then I'll talk to this. So I have one more thing that I cast on yesterday. Now, finish that row. Hooray. Now put it away before Grace puts another row on it because it's just addictive. Just round and round and round and round and round. So the next whip I've got going is the Cur d'Amour. And it's for a friend of mine who's getting married in August. And I have just started it. I finished chart A. I don't know how many charts there are. Hang on one second. Uh, it's by Andrea Jura Yuragu. And it's in a book called Vin uh, Vintage Lace, I think it's called. One second, it should be at the bottom. Or at the top. Of one of the pages. New Vintage Lace, it's called. New Vintage Lace by Andrea... Jura go, Jura, Jura growl, Jur growl, possibly. And it's a beautiful, beautiful shawl. And I have looked at the notes, and there are some errata, and I've I've put them into place, so I should be okay. It's my first proper, proper lacy lace, lace, lace. And I had a bit of fun this morning, trying to figure out how lifelines work. And how they don't go through your stitch markers if they're solid steel circular stitch markers. It's 
so yeah anyway I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute but I've got one two three four five charts to go and I've finished the first one already and there's some beading involved I don't have any beads sorry excuse me burp but I don't have any beads I was looking at a lot of them, but I didn't really know which ones to get. I should have really, I, d I hadn't bought the pattern at this stage because they tell you exactly what type of beads you need. Um, for this, you need a lace weight yarn, um, 754 meters. And I started out with <laughs> a four ply, beautiful yarn by just uh, Fiber Spates. Um, and this is a 50% silk, 50% merino. And it's, stunning but the um the swatch wasn't coming out right it wasn't lacy enough it wasn't loose enough it wasn't right and i decided okay i have the yarn now that i was going to use at the start and i'll just start again but that's okay but now i've, I've had a practice so this is Mars and Sons Empire 2 ply and it's 700 meters and 50 grams i know that's slightly less but i'm hoping that i'll just stop when I when I run out <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> I think I might need Tina to go in and get another ball just in cases I don't know I thought this is going to be enough but it's only 50 grams 700 meters and 50 grams and you need uh, eight, uh 754 meters I might have enough oh 60 grams <laughs> 754 grams because this is very fine like this is on this is way finer than like Malo, Manistel or Guaymarina you know it's really really light so and I have a quite a tight gauge so I might be okay <laughs> but like 54 meters is quite a lot to be short by right it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine! Tina, could you just get one more of these? Uh, it's soft white 200. Lot number 1508. Have you written that down? Soft white 200, 1508 when you're coming up in July. That would be awesome. Or June, whenever you're coming. Could you do that for me? I love you. I love you lots, just in case. Hopefully I'll be finished by then. But if I'm not, I will wait for you. <laughs> so I had an adventure this morning. <sighs> so when I was in Sydney, I took a, well, I went to one of the Knitters Guild classes, which if you're ever in Sydney and, oh my gosh, you should join the Knitters Guild. It is amazing. Fantastic, fantastic place to be and go. So they have this whole like class rundown system where there was like three or four people one of them was teaching how to do Estonian nups and one was teaching um, I think Deb from My Knitting Hill on uh, Instagram who is actually opening up a fabulous new shop in April it's called Skein Sisters and oh my god I'm so jealous anyone in Sydney needs to go and find Skein Sisters I will put the address down below right now so you can definitely look it up and see oh my gosh you are going to go wild. They have Sweet Georgia. They have lots of other yarns. They're all like, you know, American. Um, American. I think they have New Zealand as well and some Australian, I'm sure. And they have lots of EU, UK based yarn as well. Oh my gosh. They're going to do as well every month. They're going to have a... Um, a yarn dyer of the month I think it is and they'll have like a wall where they 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 show off different yarn dyers and stuff like that so it kind of allows yarn dyers who aren't able to do wholesale completely you know who aren't set up to make a huge amount or that they're able to make a certain amount and then just do that just that just once off you know um oh they're so great I wish I was there I think I'll just have to go back and visit I'll have to visit you girls anyway where was I yeah so she taught a beading class actually uh Deb and then there was another woman who was talking about lifelines in lace and I decided I would take her advice and put a lifeline in and these little Haya Hayas are quite handy because they have this hole see that that hole I don't know you can probably see that green yeah I don't know why it's anyway this is not the focusiest um so I was like great I'm just gonna put like I have a just a 
thread, contrast colour thread, and I was just pop it through and then I'll just slide the knitting through, take the contrast thread out and then put it back on and that would be great, everything fine. And then I realised that the thread was through the stitch markers. I was like, oh, that's not going to work, is it? So I went to Instagram and I literally have had like 16 different options of what I could do to avoid that. There were people who were like, oh, you could use the clippy light bulb things, stitch markers and take them off. And Deb actually suggested that you get a straw. She suggested that she saw someone do this on Knitting Knit Stars. Uh, someone got a straw and just cut up really, really fine bits and you could just leave it in like, and then cut them off when you're done, which I was like, brilliant idea because they worth nothing are they um and someone said if you have enough stitch markers like that you could actually leave the stitch markers in your knitting and put put more in on top and if you have to rip back you'll have stitch markers in the right place as well and i was like that's genius uh, what i'm going to do for now is i bought some of the light bulb stitch markers um in a shop in Hobart in Tasmania and they're, they're, I'll use some of them so I'll be able to open and close them I think on the next pass when I come through again. Now and I want to thank everybody for their brilliant suggestions. Fabulous. Um, I'm keeping it in this bag that I got from the National Trust. Can you see that? Yeah the nationaltrust.org.uk. There's little sheepies on it. Sheepy 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 and there's one black sheep. Oh, there's a black sheep on both sides. I love it. Um, it's a really, really nice sturdy canvas bag with nice handles. And it's just like, lace doesn't really take up much space at all, but I do need space and time to think about it. Um, so I've been, um, not been able to take it around with me, you know what I mean? So it's quite handy to have something that stands up and like can stay down by your side. Now I want to talk about a lace chart. Ooh, sorry. A little bit. And I won't be showing you properly because, you know, it's a paid for book that you have to buy. But I finished the first chart and I've been using this highlighter tape. And it is so great. I bought this in Brooklyn General. And I've been using the same piece of tape the whole way down, like the whole way down. So you don't have to use a lot of it. So this will literally last forever, I think. Until I stop knitting, <laughs> which will never happen. Because um, I have big plans for a big cable jumper, a big lace jumper, cardigan. I just need everything and I need the charts. I like charts. So... Oh, um, in this pattern, it's only charts. There's no written instructions. If you're if you're a person who likes written instructions instead of charts, this might not be the thing for you. Um, but there are other beautiful patterns in this book, um, New Vintage Lace. I bought it online. It's an ebook, um, and then I just printed off the pages I needed. So yeah, I really recommend highlighter tape if you're doing charts, and. Um, those, um, I will keep you updated about the stitch marker lifeline situation because I do need a lifeline because I am not very good at keeping count of things and I'm, I've already had to think back a couple of times because I forgot one whole, two whole rows of the chart. I was just like, la 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 la, carry on regardless. And that didn't work, I'll tell you that much. Anyway, so I'm really enjoying that. And I'm using Haya Haya's for that because they were the only ones where I had the right size needle. The needle size is 2.75, I think. Let me double check for you. Uh, 2.75, 40 centimeter circular needle. Uh, 2.75 millimeter, yes, US size two. And I, uh, I didn't do a gauge swatch. I did do a gauge swatch to test out all the yarn. I figured out it didn't work. And then I was like, I'll use actual lace. I don't need to do a gauge swatch. We'll see when I run out of yarn, hey? But I'm a tight knitter. That means I could get away with having, using less yarn. Is that right? Is that how it goes? I don't know. Anyway, next segment now is about knitting friends. Knitting friends. 
needs knitting friends. Everybody has to have some knitting friends. That's a great theme tune. Well done, Grace. Right, so when I got home, oh, sorry, put that down, that's distracting me. Uh, when I got home, I knew that um, uh, Barbara from Knitting I Love podcast lived in Limerick, like quite close to me because she works in a place I used to go quite a lot. And I was like, oh my gosh, we must meet up. And then, and then I, wa I was watching some of her stories, her Instagram stories. And I saw somewhere like I found really familiar and I was like, oh my gosh, like that's right down the road from me. She's literally able to walk to my house. Like, this is crazy. So I decided to go for a walk. And we tracked each other on our stories, on our walking store, on our Instagram stories to see where we were. And I, we, we met just on the back roads. And she said, I, you know, she was saying, you know, I'll get you out of the house, Grace. I will tempt you with some minis. And I was like, I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> So she gave me this little bag of minis. I was literally just coming home from um, Dublin at this stage. So I literally ran in the door, grabbed a bag and shoved some minis in there. I don't even know what they were. I'm so sorry, Barbara. But anyway, I threw, threw enough in. But look at this cute little bag. Isn't it gorgeous? It's so gold. I feel golden. <sighs> so she gave me three minis and the tags i didn't give her any tags worst worst swapper ever <laughs> i'm sure she'll forgive me this is good she puts the tags with them i put a tag in in a big in a little pouch all the tags are in one pouch and that's no good really so she has made shawls and socks and all this stuff with all of this. So this, oh, look at this. This is Wolfenschafe hand dyed yarns. And that shop, this is Soul Society. This is BFL four ply and 100% uh, superwash BFL. And they have an Etsy store, uh, Wolfenschafe, uh, Etsy.com. And it's so cute. Oh. I love this color, isn't this beautiful? And they're like proper size minis as well. Super good. And this is crafty craftfulness. Craftfulness. I love this. I think I did something in art. I did something quite like this. Anyway, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This color is Breath Basel. Breath ba Breath Base. The breath base bit puzzle and the color is loft i think so pretty so nice and then this one is so cute this is a regia regia uh four ply and um yeah it's kind of one of their variegated yarns so it kind of stripes up kind of randomly not in stripes so that's so nice thank you so much and then i've been watching these they are so cute. So I think originally you were using these as like little tags to put on to put on your knitted objects, weren't you, Barbara? And then they, then you like, you know, you can see you can actually clip on all your stitch markers. So I'm going to clip on all my stitch markers. She's got these amazing new tags um, available. Actually, they've got lots of different that she I think they're about a third of the size. And you've got lots of different things you can put on, like a kitty cat or a star or a heart. It's so cute. So yeah, her store, her um, website, I think, is www.knittingilove.com, I think. You can buy them off her website. But we met up and then I walked to her house and she made me tea and she showed me her knitting cave and it was amazing. And I unraveled some yarn for her and I must give it back to her at some stage. I can't remember where it is. It's somewhere upstairs, I'm sure. Come and get come and get it, Barbara, because um, yeah, you need to get it. Um oh just look at this purple one. I really like that purple one. She's got little flowers in there. How did she do it? I love it. 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 So they're great. Super awesome. And they're the progress keepers. So because you have to be able to clip them in. So this is a progress keeper keeper. 
So that was nice. And she gave me a cup of tea as well. And it's Puka Love. A touch of organic rose, chamomile, and lavender. I might have some of that later. At the moment I'm drinking Sprite, which is terrible, but I fancied it. I went for, um, so Barbara's got me into this run keeper now as part of the fog along that's run by the bakery bears. And I've just been invited into their group and I was very proud of myself. I almost did five miles in an hour and 20 minutes today. So that was really, really cool. And now I'm tired, but I'm going to go again because I, tomorrow I've got this big 14 kilometer walk. And I think that's about 10, 10 miles. It's all flat. It'll be fine. I hope so. I hope so. It will be fine. It will be fine. Now, I've got two more things to talk about. Gosh, quite a lot to talk about, really. It's shocking. Not like me at all, is it? Having things to talk about. <laughs> so, when I was in Tasmania, I, I, just, I just happened to see a certain person update their Instagram feed with a... Uh, Oh, my yarn sale goes on sale with all of my Harry Potter yarn clubs in five minutes. And I was like, I'm just going to have a look at Nora George yarns on Etsy. So her April, May and July, June um, Harry Potter sock club are going to be winging, my way, winging their way to me. Yay! But I also couldn't resist toffee apple toffee apple fuck that i haven't taken it out it's too precious i actually have taken it out to take a picture of it but this bit this bit it's like a like that acidy green um granny smith you know oh my favorite and i just oh, so yeah i am so happy with this it's 100 percent superwash merino and 25 percent nylon 100 grams and 20 grams. Wow, so it's a full 100 grams and 20 grams. Oh my gosh, I might get two socks out of this. I am totally stuck on the sock front. I just don't know what to, what to cast on first. I have 15,000 ideas in my head and I want to do them all. Why can't I do them all? Anyway, I've got, I feel like I've got three whips and two hibernating whips and that's a lot. But I also want to cast on all the things I said I would cast on last week for the Asia Cal because I really want to do them. <sighs> but you know what? I enjoy knitting. And I think I'm I'm very bad at at joining other people's cals. That's I think that's my thing. I think I haven't hosted my own cal in a long time because I know I've got so much to do and I don't know if I have anything special to cal about. <laughs> I'm sure that will change. But right now I'm, I'm focusing on my new job, sorting out life in Ireland, hopefully moving into the new place soon and trying to find some routine somewhere in my life. I don't know if I'm made for routine. I'm not sure. But anyway, speaking about the wow cow and cows, I got another surprise in the post and I have opened these. So this is part of the prize for the wow cow. Each one of the podcasters that are hosting the, the wow cow um, get a set of these for themselves and also a set to give away on the on the cow, which is amazing. Um, and it was all organized by Fatima and it's dyed up by my yarn story company. So I'm going to just show you all of these. Now they're all based on the individual continents. This is the My Yarn Story Company and My Yarn Story Co. Um, and she is a yarn dyer in Singapore. So all of these are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 425 meters in 100 grams if you get 100 gram skeins. But these are, I don't know how much these are actually. I would say 20 grams. If that's 20 grams, yeah, this is about 20 grams. So how much did we get? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is 120 grams that she gave us. Wow. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay. So we'll start off with my country, which was Australia. And that theme that she picked was flora and fauna. So pretty. So pretty. Reminds me of like the wildflowers that you'd see 
um, in one of Peta's uh, Dingo Dye Works, one of her um, vlogs that she did, one of her podcasts. She went to a whole field of wildflowers and it was just amazing. So thank you for that, that's gorgeous. And then we went to Africa and this is Savannah. And oh, just look at this one, this one's so nice. But it's got this awesome like pink speckle in the middle of this green, which makes me really happy as well. So very nice. And then we went to Asia and this is the Eclectic Collection. And this kind of reminds me of like the birds or something that I saw in uh, in and around Asia. I don't know why. I don't know why. So nice. Maybe all of the rice and noodles <laughs> that I ate. And then now, as of today, we are moving in to Europe. And oh, I just love this one. I think this might be my favorite one, actually. Oh, I don't know, actually. But this is Aurora Borealis. And it is just stunning. I love this colorway so much. So beautiful. I would love to use all of these together in something, but I don't know how. I don't want to do... I've seen a lot of people doing like stripy cowls, but that's not really what I want to do with it. I'm not sure. Anyway, so the next place we're going is North America, which is including Canada and America. No, other states. And I'm not sure if it includes Mexico as well. I don't know why not. Anyway, this is called Liberty. And it's like a mad explosion of pinks and beautiful colors. Oh, it's just really, really nice. I love it. Very amazing. And this one is the final one. And this one has like really bright jewel tones. Uh, and it's called South African Splendor. And this is like proper carnival, you know, like just mad colors, beautiful, beautiful colors. And they're so bright and vibrant, which reminds me of when I was in Rio de Janeiro in, um, on New Year's Eve. Everyone had to wear white, but they also had like all of this other color going on. It was just amazing. But I'd love to go to South Africa for... South America for um, Carnival or some some place that does Carnival. I need to go there. After speaking to Shamika and after staying at Shamika's house talking about Carnival all the time, I'm like, I want to go so bad. But I, I would have to seriously like fit into one of those bikinis. But at least they don't mind the figure because one has to have a figure to fit in into a nice bikini, you know, like feathers and sequins. It's totally not my thing. But I would do it anyway because that's what traveling's all about. Oh my gosh, that would be so much fun. Shamika, let's do it. I keep on making loads of plans that I totally can't keep. I suppose I can, like the future. To me, planning for a travel, I feel like I can only think two years ahead because if I put anything farther away than that, it doesn't exist for me, you know? I'm like, Two years ahead, I four or five years. That's nothing. That's that's never gonna happen, you know. But if I can plan for two years ahead, but I've just got so much to plan for now, and there's no way I can fit it in two years. It's kind of daunting. And then I don't. I also like to have room for changing my mind and doing things in the spur of the moment as well. So I think that's why I like the two year idea because you can plan for two years. You can do things in two years or six months even is quite good. But the, um, any longer than that, and it doesn't exist for me. But I don't like doing things super spur of the moment, like this weekend I'm going to Rome. I was like, no, because the flights are going to be so expensive. <laughs> so I have to have some things planned. Isn't that funny? Anyway, um, so I'm, what I'm going to do this week now is work away as well, again. <laughs> um, do a little bit of filming and videoing of the walk that I'm going to do tomorrow. And also I'm going to go through all of the answers that everybody has given me for the question for the giveaway yes, last week and see if I can, um, see if I can, uh, you know, decide, you know, take some of those and decide um, where to go from here with the podcast this year, because I'm having a great time. I hope you are too. 
And I want to keep doing this for a very long time because I love making, I love creating, I love contacting and communicating with like-minded, amazing, creative people. And um, I just, I want to keep growing and learning and doing things and traveling places, even if it's for my own kitchen table. <laughs> so I love you lots and I'll let you go. 